Alright, so this time I've got something really cool. I've got this Armageddon Steel Legion Chimera that I painted up. You can see it's all painted with the, uh, the nice reflective searchlight and all the weathering, the chipping, the rust effects, the awesome tank treads. So I'm going to do this in a tutorial and I'll show you step by step on how to do it. Uh, the, the biggest thing I'm going to talk about right now is you need to make sure to do your sub-assemblies. So you build the whole Chimera except for the tank treads and the turret. The turret you just keep up separate. Uh, I've got some over here. And then if you have the, this works the same for not only Chimeras, but for um, Hellhounds and stuff like too, any Chimera variant, even uh, Lehman Rust tanks. So you just leave the uh, this off. You can magnetize that later if you want to, because it goes on really easily on the bottom. Um, and then the, these just screw in. Let's see, this is a Hellhound turret. Uh, but the key is to keep the tank treads off so that you can just airbrush them or spray them or even paint them by hand uh, on the spruce separately. That's really important because it saves you a ton of time. So, uh, got that done. Now, I can show you, you just gotta glue them on. So that's really the first step is just making sure, see if I can get that to focus. Just make sure to do, do it in sub-assemblies. I glued it, these in, but these can be removed. Um, these can shift if you want them to. The reason I glued them in is because it's easier to paint if they're static. Plus, with line of sight now in Eighth Edition, you don't have to worry about that. So, just do it in some assemblies, and I'll see you in a minute when I start the painting. All right, so now I got the tank done. I've got to actually weather it. So I'm going to start with some airbrushing and then some washes. But first, is the airbrushing. So I'm going to show you the finished one again. So you can kind of see where I'm going to airbrush. I'm going to do it over some of the rivets. Uh, over the entire edge of this, around the back door. Uh, you can do the bottom down here. All the tank treads you're going to want to do because we're going to dry brush over those. Um, doing all these rivets down here. So there's a lot in involved from going between these two. You can see the big difference. So, but right now we're just going to do the airbrushing. For that, um, we, let me see if we can get a model that actually shows you. There we go. This is Model Air Light Rust. It's actually a really nice, like, orangish red rust, which is awesome. So, I'm gonna make sure that I got enough space here. I'm gonna get started. So, again, I'm gonna use my hand. I don't have to do that, but there you go. It's a little too much. I think I have some black left over from last time. So, I'm gonna spray that out. Got my thing here. There we go. Test again. There we go. A piece of paper is better, but I don't have one to hand, so. So you can see, I'm not gonna go on everything because you're gonna actually go over it with wash later. But right now I'm gonna choose things, like I'm gonna do the edge here, see that? I'm gonna do all these down here, around here. all the way around here. So you just do it the way you feel like. You don't have to do it exactly the same way I do. But this just adds a little extra to the color. Um, you're not going to see this as much either because we're going to do chipping. But just use that as, this is kind of an idea. Biggest thing is the tank treads here. Make sure you get those. It's kind of the main idea. You don't have to go too crazy because we're gonna dry brush that. But this is just to pick out all the detail. Like back here, this corner down here. All the edges here. Around there. If you see a spot that you want to just do some rust on, like maybe the corner of this thing over here, like you just choose for yourself. Are there any scratches or anything between when you started and now? There we go, down here, very bottom of this, anywhere you feel like. It's kind of up to you. Don't do everything, otherwise it'll look too, you know, you'll go too overboard, but that's the idea. 
But I'm going to finish this and I'll see you guys in a minute. Alright, so now I'm doing all the little details. Uh, the lenses are actually really easy. I'm doing the metals and all the little things that you're going to do before we do any washes. So the metals are actually Vallejo Model Air Steel um, for the lenses. So I'm doing that right here and on the little lenses there and then of course on the whole ones for the crew to see out of because there are little monitors inside I don't know honestly I don't know if it works as through monitors or mirrors it's the Imperium I would I would believe either but basically we're trying to get this nice shine on there so that when we do a clear lacquer it'll actually look like glass so any of these lenses and stuff especially the ones back here hard to see a lot of people don't even bother painting them these back here we're going to want to hit those as well just be very careful this Vallejo model air steel goes a long way so it's hard to and it dries pretty quickly so it's hard to correct your mistakes when you're done but just make sure you put them on there and then we're going to go to just some, some lead belcher from games workshop as well and this we're going to use and we're going to put all the gun barrels so I'm going to go like, you can do it on the whole thing if you want, but I'm only going to do it on half. I'm only going to go on the barrel right here. And then you're going to want to do the front here, as well as the other bolter or any of the guns you have, like a, a turret, like an auto cannon turret like this one. You just do the front and pick out some details in metal, mostly because we're going to have an accent of uh, metallic that is just going to be for chipping so we're not going to have to worry about that later so now we're just picking out all the little details now don't forget as well this is um it's like a shroud uh, i'm actually getting out some worn frame brown now i just mixed it so i gotta open up the bottle okay so for the the uh, hull gun right here it's actually like this leather shroud it's kind of a kind of harkens back to traditional tanks because that's how they actually rotate the gun and keep it a little weather tight yeah we're gonna do a more fang brown on here the reason for that and uh, the reason I'm doing a lighter brown instead of darker brown is because the wash we're gonna put on it darkens it up quite a bit and you can see I'm actually painting the turtle the uh, gun a little bit it's easy it's really easy to paint over that you can see I'm kind of overlapping there it's really easy to paint the metal on top of that. So any little mistakes, we'll be able to neaten those up later. Try to be as accurate as you can and paint this whole shroud. There we go. Cool, so just get those done and I'll see you in a minute. So all the airbrushing is done on the tank. We did all the rust effects and everything, but now we need to turn it from just a blank slate into this. It's a lot more weathered, a lot dirtier, uh, and we're gonna have to do a wash. So the wash I use is Agrax or Shade. It's a nice dark brown. But one thing to bear in mind, because we're gonna do a wash on the bottom here, on all the rivets, and you have multiple places, so even if you're trying to hold it, you don't really wanna hold it like this, because it'll get annoying after a while. If you're pretty quick, you can do that, but if you get wash on your fingers like this and then touch a different part, then you're going to mess up your bottle. So you don't want to do that. So I recommend either a wood dowel or what I do is my microsol bottle for my decals. Just some, some blue tack, some poster tack, and then go right on the bottom. The thing you got to make sure of uh, with the tank is you have a, a wide, uh, a large uh, radius on the sphere uh, cylinder you're using to hold it up because it needs a lot of contact area to make that uh, the adhesive in the blue tack hold it on so once that's done now I'm not touching it at all we're going to get some wash again it helps to have a little fan but for this it doesn't really matter too much so I'm going to I got a bunch on here I'm gonna hit this whole armor panel you gotta decide, so I could have I could have done the separate rivets, but realistically I've gotta paint this whole thing, so might as well just do the whole thing. But on these bigger panels, like up here, we're gonna to wanna to do each individual rivet. 
I'm not a big fan of this just because it takes forever, but it really does make a difference. When you do it to the whole panel, you can really see it. Here's one that doesn't have the chipping on it, but that I just did a wash on. And I'll compare the two. See the extra detail there? It really brings out all the armors. All the, the lines and everything. It, it really does help. And then, so that's really it for the rivets. But on the bottom, you're going to want to get by the tank treads down here. You're going to want to go along this entire line. And you can do use a lot more down here if you want, because that's where all the dirt and dust is going to settle. So you kind of need that down there anyway. And you don't have to be too picky about it. Just make sure that the whole area is covered. And then for these rivets up here, just do those separate. And then the tank treads, they still need some detail picked out. So we're going to do a wash on those as well. So you want to do the tank tread and the edge here as well. That's it, you can kind of judge for yourself what needs to be washed and what doesn't. But I'll come back when we do the armor chipping. With the wash done, I'm actually gonna to go to the lenses and especially the searchlight. Now, you can see we painted in that silver earlier. Now I'm gonna use one of my favorite types of paint. This is Tamiya Clear Acrylic. This is a clear blue. And make sure you get a brush that you don't like very much. I have this really old Army Painter Wargamer detail, but it's uh, most of the bristles are gone, so this is perfect. So I'm going to very carefully paint it on all the silver parts of the lens. Sorry, if I can helps if I'm in camera. <laughs> so yeah, just carefully paint into all the silver parts, and depending on how bright you want it, it may take two coats. Uh, but this does take quite a while to dry, so I recommend either putting it in front of a fan. Or letting it sit overnight because it'll feel like it's dry but then if you touch it you could break the uh, surface tension and actually it's not quite dry all the way through so just bear that in mind and then on these lenses here the little ones at the front you're gonna want to hit those like that see that and then on this one as well Now you can do this as the very last step, especially since you have to let it dry. But the reason I'm doing it now is because I want it to dry. I need to finish this project quickly. So I'm going to let it dry while I work on other stuff and then come back and do all the uh, chipping and scoring and stuff. But if you do it in that order, just be careful when you use the sponge to do the chipping, not to hit any of the lenses. All right, but that's it for this step. I'll come back and I'll show you that. The search lights are done and we're going to switch over to all of the weathering and all the chipping. Now, I have covered this before, but I haven't covered it in detail. So I've got something in front of me. This is foam from a Pelican case. Any foam will work, but you need to uh, just kind of gauge off my hand you know how small the, the foam is. A lot of the, um, the bubbles inside need to be really fine, and a lot of foam doesn't quite do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to rip off a piece, and you're going to want a chisel tip. This one didn't quite rip properly, so if you can't get one, just take a pair of scissors, go at it like a sharp angle like that, cut it, because you're going to need this little tip right here at the end, right there. And I've, I've moved the camera so you can actually see my palette now. We're going to grab two paints. Uh, the first one is going to be Rhinox Hide, and I, that actually I have behind me. Uh, it's good to use it out of the pot. The same with the light belcher, even though I have some on my palette. It's good to do it right out of the pot, because you can have a little more control with getting the paint out. Now, I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna use the tip here. You're gonna wanna get a decent amount, just a big dollop like that. But you're actually going to want to focus down here on the palette pad, and I'll actually zoom in on that really quick. You can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna put this most of this aside, and you're gonna use, you want a nice surface like this, so you can see exactly how uh, it affect, is gonna affect the miniature. So I'm going to stab it like this, and that is more what you want. Very fine, so that you can have control. And then the harder you push on the miniature, the more you're going to get. So I actually want some pretty, a pretty fair amount of chipping on the front, like it ran over some guys. So I'm going to do a little bit, 
and then if I feel like I need more, you can barely even see that. See that? Just like that. And then if I want a lot, I just push even harder. And there you go, there's your chipping. And if I want scrapes and stuff, then I'll go like this. Just gently, like it just hit something on the way. And then down here too, here's a nice solid surface. You can pull, and then it'll be like it ran over a bunch of stuff. That's all you need for the chipping. That's really it. And then in the end, you'll end up looking like, see if I can find the one that's already done. There it is, like that. And the only difference is on these, I did that chipping with the Rhinox hide, and then I switched over and did more with lead belcher. And that's it. Uh, you just apply it however you want. If you want it really chipped and scored, then you can use a lot more lead belcher. But that's really it. Adding that gives you that extra layer of, of chipping and scoring. That's it. And then uh, the lead belcher you can also use on the tank treads, like it's actually scraping the metal. But all done. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. If you have any questions or you want to see a specific tutorial, just let me know.